So guys, we conquered. TGI Fly 1.4.3 has now been released and it fixes some issues, particularly on iOS with regards to the battery charging that is now back. It also fixes uh, some stability issues as well, which occurred on Android. Let's do a full review right now. I dropped a video earlier on all about the battery on iOS, but DJI responded to the first video I did last week, which was brilliant. Thanks so much DJI for noticing this issue and fixing it so swiftly. Filming in the UK, it's available on the iOS app store right now. And if you are on Android, you can't get it on the Google Play Store. You have to go into the DJI website. Just type in DJI Fly on Google, click on the first link, the download center. And then from there, it will show you the download. Even though it says 1.4.2, when you go to download that, it usually downloads the latest version, which is 1.4.3. Anyway, let's get into it. So when you're all connected, as you can see now, the phone is connected to the controller, and then you'll see that your charging icon is automatically on. It comes on as soon as you connect it, and it stays on. There is no ability now to turn it off or on. It just auto charges, just like it does on Android. So I would still prefer the choice, but it's better than nothing at all. So that is now charging. I did a full video earlier on covering just that but we now got that again so i do appreciate that these videos aren't the most entertaining but it is also crucial for me to fully review this live with you now and then give my full opinion whether you should go and update it or not or maybe hold off so i'm going to be covering quite a few of the different settings seeing if anything else has been lost anything's changed or if any stability problems whatsoever so just checking out all the pro mode camera features are still the same in that corner you just slide across to change your fps and all your values settings your shutter speed your iso nothing's changed there and then in the bottom left hand corner you can see there i've got the attitude indicator on if you want to actually change that to map mode you just click on the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of the attitude indicator or you can press the bottom left hand corner to minimize it like that it is fiddly you know if you've got pretty big fingers you might struggle but if you press the corner buttons of either left or right hand side it does work and then the battery indicator at the top that's exactly the same satellite's the same and the signal strength indicates all the same so the compass calibration i did see a video about this so I'll quickly address it so if you get loads of beeping that's because you're either really close to metal objects or you're in a car just like this now compass error so if you're taking off in the car or you actually turn your drone on in the car you're going to get compass errors so step away from anything metal or your car and then you won't have any of that it really isn't an issue so anyway that's the drone sorted let's get it in the air We've got another truly awful day weather-wise, but that's not going to hamper us. We're just going to go through some of these settings now. So once again, I do apologize. Not the most interesting video, but I do love to cover all this in detail. And then I can give my honest opinion to you guys before you go and download it yourself and then go, oh, it's got loads of issues and stuff. I'm doing loads of stuff on here to try and different things. See if the app crashes, see if there's any problems with it, any stuttering, anything at all, then I can feed back. So let's check out the zooms first of all, just as normal. So let's, we're going to concentrate on, on this shell here, testing out the one time zoom, two time zoom, put it into 2.7K and then the zoom should be nice and smooth now, zooming into that, let's just check that out and that just seems really nice and stable. So what I'm actually doing on this testing now, I'm trying to get the app to crash, I'm trying to get it to lag or stutter, have some disconnections, I'll take the risk and then you don't have to, hopefully it should be nice and stable. 1080p we should now still have the option of four time zoom, so as that's zooming in now, Nice and stable, nice and smooth. I don't want any stuttering, lags, nothing. I just want it to be perfect. And that looks pretty perfect to me. You see, last time when we lost the phone charge on iOS, it wasn't documented in the notes. It was really subtle, but it was a big deal. So I'm going to go into detail in the settings shortly to make sure we've not lost anything else. Just check the photo out. All the photos are exactly the same. You've got bracket photos, time photos. Nothing has actually changed whatsoever with this. And we're not expecting any big changes, but we don't want anything else lost at all. Any extra features you may ask, that will be a firmware update. We haven't had a firmware update for this DJI Mini 2 for quite a while now. So that probably is because of a Mini 3 potentially coming out. So they're not gonna get anything extra I can't see for this. But we can just keep it, the app and the actual drone running perfectly smooth, just like it is up to now, then that'll be good enough. So in regards to photos, everything you may have used before is still exactly the same. Nothing has lost there. 
and then quick shots we're just going to test out a quick shot to see if that causes any app crashes and make sure that's nice and stable so we're going to put the bog standard one on here just 25 meter just going to push it back and check all that out so away it goes so that should keep that lock onto that shell and have no problem at all keeping that lock even as it gets further away and it has so no problem there and then all the other quick shots as you see in the menu they're the same rocket circle helix and boomerang all exactly the same and then a quick tip for you if you do like filming quick shots just make sure you've got your resolution set as high as you can if you like filming it in 4k and not 1080p a lot of the times in quick shots it actually changes it to 1080p as default so but if you just go back onto quick shots now look in that bottom right hand corner where it says res so mine says res 4k if you actually select that you can actually change it from 1080p to 2.7k or 4k so if it's defaulted to 1080p you can change it and then you can get the highest quality you can possibly get when you're actually filming a quick shot which is great to know all right so now we've done that let's just click on the top right hand corner we'll just go through some of the settings and then see if anything else has been lost and if we've got anything new or anything different at all or has anything moved just before you start going out flying it's good to check this and check that your values haven't been reset they shouldn't do with a fly update they shouldn't but just if you have to make sure your altitude distance and return to home is just where you want it so they're the same so update home point you can still drag your home point just like you could before so you can actually change it just by dragging that cursor icon to where you want your home point to be or you can click one of the arrows on the right hand side so you can have it set to your rc to your location so that's the exact same compass i'm using same battery info all that is the same so i know this isn't very entertaining but i wanted to just check that we haven't lost anything because it was sneaky of dji before for that to go but everything as regards to advanced safety settings find my drone everything is all the same there so don't worry about that and then in actual control this is where we lost the ability for the ios charging icon that went it still has gone you won't find it there but the gimbal calibration is the same and the manual i did notice um it's it can't be it's just going to be me because it's not a firmware update but it isn't as bad as normal you know normally this is way off and to me that's not actually that bad it's probably a, a point or two off so i'll just quickly change that now um so just check and let me know in the comments if you have got problems with your gimbal calibration is it any better is it just me it's usually only going to be solved this with the firmware updates button customization you can click this so i have mine set to recenter the gimbal so it actually points down and points up you can change it and you still can do it for automatic exposure lock and unlock if you're in auto mode if you are in auto mode have you not watched my pro video yet and get out of auto and use pro mode settings all the time if not why go and check it out but anyway if you do like using auto that's absolutely fine and you can set it to auto exposure lock as one of your fn buttons and then maybe recenter gimbal as your other so that's the same there in camera settings you'll see you can still choose video subtitles so that's good i know loads of people love that and then you still have the same camera settings you can have a histogram or the overexposure warnings i don't tend to have them on because it just takes up so much of the screen it's just not really needed um grid lines i do use i just have the rule of thirds one in the middle keep it on all the time it helps a lot for positioning and framing when you're flying so overall in camera settings we don't seem to be seeing anything new we're not lost anything either auto sync i always leave that on to make sure the photos are on my phone as well it does only sync the actual jpegs you don't get the raw images onto your phone but at least you're going to get some and if you do like editing you can edit the raw files which is stored on the memory card so there we go so actually in settings we haven't lost anything else but i want to just check now to see the stability performance so let's just do a bit of flying now and see if we get any problems at all with the actual flying ability any drifting or problems with that battery we're going to check them out now and thanks so much to engine turbines for letting me know on android if you were having issues with your home point in the compass icon messing around going all over the place and giving inaccurate readings that from his feedback has been solved so that's great to see as well so stability there performance boost on android so i've just tested out some backwards flying and now point down shots we're going to put it on to 4k it's on 4k now so let's put it on to 2.7k 60 and then this is going to now be a slow-mo shot in post but god it looks good so i'm just going to change some of my values now put it as one one over 20 and then put my iso up to iso 200 it's probably still a bit dark there but that'll that'll do for now and then just get that frame nicely and test out cine smooth mode 
and then look at that in 2.7k 60 and that slowed down 50 percent in the editor program i'm using but god it looks good and you can do this so easily if you are interested i'm doing quite a lot of editing videos coming up quite a few of them on the ipad as well showing you something different to my normal final cut style of editing but yeah that looks phenomenal and actually give me a nice nice beach and that would look even better and then finally the best feature i want to just test out and make sure that's not gone i'm just going to lower that return to home altitude as well and then we love the orientation mode in return to home so i have just seen two people go past on a bike so i'm going to use them as my subject you can maybe just make them out just to the right hand side cycling there so as i set now my return to home the drone is automatically coming back to me but i still have full control i can actually now can descend more i can change the gimbal and then it, it actually works out to be a really good shot you don't have to worry about that drone coming back to you because it's doing that itself and I can now concentrate on framing that shot. So as you can see, the two people there cycling, they are now my subjects. It'd be so cool if you actually are watching this video. But I can fully turn the actual drone. As you can see, I'm smoothly turning it just to the right hand side, keeping them in frame. Now concentrating on that person with the red jacket on, and then I can actually control the gimbal and actually push that gimbal down. So you get a really nice shot like that. It's such a great feature. Just use it all the time. So I'm glad that's still there. So in regards to actual performance, the only last thing we need to do is put it into sports mode. So I haven't actually had any app crashes at all. So sometimes putting it from cine mode to normal to sports mode can cause some app crashes and we have done before we've had black screens but nothing this app is really nice and stable both for android and ios users so the ios users that battery charging ability is gone so it's not going to come back but it also is going to charge now but with regards to actual performance of this actual drone now everything is working perfectly and it's just great to see that dji responded so fast we've got a new update out 1.4.3 i do recommend it so go and update it go and download it and let me know in the comment section below did you find that helpful i hope so and i've got some many more videos coming very soon take care guys as always bye bye